precisely because there would be to tell the legitimate server, no, 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 you go away now. So what happens is we decide we want to go inject on MySpace. Oh, we tell MySpace, here's a reset, go away. We'll take it from here. <laughs> now, by specification, what's supposed to happen is that, remember, all these acknowledgements are being used. We're sending all this traffic to Alice. Alice is acknowledging the MySpace. And, you know, MySpace would normally receive all these acknowledgements. It would normally say, uh, dude, I'm not talking to you. Bye. And we're going to send some resets. Ah, but we have these great things, they're called firewalls. They're all paranoid. Firewalls like, uh, I don't have a session with you, clearly you're a hacker, I'm gonna pretend you don't exist. <laughs> and so it drops all your traffic, thus totally allowing Mallory to go ahead and spoof all this site. It's awesome. Remember, from the provider network, provider just sees all this traffic getting sent from quote-unquote MySpace, getting acknowledged to quote-unquote MySpace. It's perfect. The only people that know that what is happening is the client and the server, Alice and Mallory, are collaborating to mess with the provider that may potentially be hostile. Now, of course, you know, Alice is acknowledging traffic. Alice needs some way to get that traffic to, uh, to Mallory. Clearly, the normal act stream doesn't work, but, uh, you know, we have a sniffer. So we just sniff all the acknowledgements, tunnel them in Ajax using the stuff from earlier, and it just works fine. So yes, we're, we're actually going to uh, move TCP over HTTP. Rock. <laughs> so, why am I so obsessed with actually doing this? Check this creepy stuff out, you know. The goal is to identify the applications being used on the network, but some of these devices can go much further. A company like Neris can look inside IP addresses, pick out HTTP, can reassemble emails as they are typed out by the user. My god, they can't even wait for you to hit send to be creepy. <laughs> So guess what, I, guess what I can do to these guys now? I can impersonate anyone who doesn't act my traffic. I can generate arbitrary traffic that appears to come from anyone I want, and I can provide deep packet inspectors with a whole bunch of fun stuff to inspect. <laughs> so, um, don't, don't, don't mess with my traffic. It's, it's not a good idea. Conclusions. DNS rebinding threatens the boundaries of your network. There are multiple rebinding mechanisms and many major use cases for each of them. This is gonna suck to fix. The web really needs to have some work on its underlying security models. It's great for public to public. It's not so great for private stuff. Um, we may need to consider doing something to imply integrity. One of the things I didn't mention, because of ad replacement, every site's going SSL within, the, uh, within 18 months. Not every site knows it yet, but I'd invest in SSL accelerators. <laughs> um, and there are mechanisms for detecting provider hostility, and um, I'm building them. That's it. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> so I'm looking for one or two questions and or beer, and I have comic books if it's a good question. Any questions? Question was, is V6 going to fix this? Uh, like many things, V6 is totally orthogonal to this problem. You can totally rebind to another IPv6 address just like you can rebind to another IPv4 address. V6 does not help, nor does IPsec, nor does pretty much anything at layer 3. Go ahead. Uh, so with regards to uh, uh, sites you are companies being able to say, hey, you know, I'm So there, so the question, actually a good question. Here, grab a comic book. <laughs> the question is, is how does, uh, how does the legitimate use of Google, you know, Google will spread its content across a lot of IP addresses. How does this scale to Akamai, which is actually spread across not just, you know, lots of IP addresses, but lots of sites. And this is, oh wow. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. No, so this is, take two books, this is great. <laughs> so the, the proposed, so 
one of the proposed solutions is that, all right, we're going to have servers recognize the legitimate host headers, and they'll only respond to them. Well, guess what? You have Akamai that's responding to host headers from like a thousand different companies, and any of them get to mess with any of the other ones. That is awesome and totally unrealized, and we're having a beer after. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, guys, track me down later. All is awesome. <laughs> yeah, real quick, before you guys all uh, head out the door, we got lunch starting here for an hour and a half. See you back in two. But in the meantime, in the vendor area, we've got a handful of vendors there, including someone that's selling these RFID wallets. Uh, they're really nice. They're all handmade, made from recyclable materials. Check them out. Um, ask uh, uh, Kevin Paulson about Des, okay? And uh, <laughs> then he's over there laughing about that. He knows what I'm talking about. Uh, use Google. I'm not saying actually go ask uh, uh, Paulson uh, uh, about it, uh, but uh, use Google. We'll find out what I'm talking about. But uh, Des has some problems, and it can be used against you. Uh, ask former spooks about uh, PGP GPG, okay? Uh, and because uh, there's the rumors that go back and forth, you have some people say, oh, it's backable, oh, it's not, oh, it's backdoor. I don't think it's backdoor. I really think it's probably in the way that it's been implemented in some form or fashion. Uh, more than likely, if you do something really scary or creepy and you, and you GPG encrypt it, uh, if they do get a hold of that and they do manage to do some type of